bringing you a little tutorial about how to use uh, JSketcher. JSketcher is available uh, publicly at web-cad.org. So you can visit that website and you can actually use the JSketcher application. Um, it's also available on GitHub. So hopefully you'll take a look at that. Um, today I'm going to go over the extrude and cut commands. Um, they're pretty easy and very simple. Uh, I'm going to start off with a basic plane. So I'm going to create a plane. You can pick whatever axis you want to put the plane on. I'm going to put it on the XY. So there we are. We've created a plane. Now, before I can start doing anything, I have to select the plane and go into a sketch. So I'm going to select the plane and hit Edit Sketch. Now, when you hit Edit Sketch, it's going to bring you into the 2D Sketcher. Okay, And what this is going to allow me to do is to draw a shape. So I went up here and I clicked on the Add Multi-Segment. And what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a shape. Now when I'm done drawing that shape, I can just hit Escape. And now I'm able to go and actually uh, put some constraints on it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick um, these two lines. And I'm going to tell them that I want them to be horizontal. I'm going to pick that line and let's see. I'm going to make this one vertical. I'm going to make this one vertical. There we are. So now I have a, uh, a basic rectangle. This is something that a lot of people will start with. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save. So what that does is that saves my sketch and it makes it so that I can use it in the 3D view space. <clears throat> so now that I'm in the 3D view space, I can get back to my sketch just by hitting the tab down here. Um, and you can switch back over to 3D view by hitting the 3D view tab down here. Um, so at this point, um, it, I'm going to go to the extrude command. Now, notice how I still have that uh, plane selected. If I come down here, I can deselect everything. Notice how the extrude and the cut commands both say that it requires a uh, face to be selected. So I'm just going to make sure that I uh, have that plane selected first. And then I could do extrude. So the extrude command, um, you can kind of see it here. Um, it's actually creating the 3D solid. Um, you can see the outline of that. I can adjust the, uh, the, the height of that 3D solid by entering in a value, let's just say 300. And you can actually see how it updates real time in the view. I can also use my scroll wheel. If I'm clicked in the height box, I can scroll and adjust that. I can also hold down my shift button and it will increment that value when using the scroll wheel by 100. So that's pretty nice. Um, at this point, uh, I'm going to show you what the prism does, uh, the prism value. Now it's set to 1, so that means that the opposite end of the extrude is going to be the same size as the beginning. If I were to set that to something like 1.5, the end over here is going to be 1.5 times the size of the original sketch. If I were to set it to something like 0.5, it's going to be half the size of the original sketch. And you can see the taper there. Okay, For, for this purpose right now, I'm going to set that to 1. Um, the other thing that you can adjust here are the angles. So I can set this to something like 45 and notice how I can adjust that angle. If I set this one to 45 also, you can see how I can adjust the, the, the skew angle there. So if I were to enter in a negative number, you can see how it moves. In this particular case, I'm going to enter in values of 0 and I'm just going to stick with a plain simple extrude. There we are. We have a simple extrude. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a face on here and I'm going to make a cut into it. So to do that, I'm going to just pick a face. So I'm just going to click on a face. You'll notice how it highlights. 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit sketch. Now the sketch itself is going to become part of the face. So when I hit, when I select the face and I hit edit sketch, it's going to bring me into the sketcher and notice how it gives me the, uh, the 2D profile of that face. So it allows me to see that 2D profile. Um, at this point, I'm going to draw a, uh, a circle on here. And if I draw more than one, um, you know, I can make multiple holes in here. And uh, as I said earlier, you have to go and hit the save button after modifying your sketch. Now if I go back over here to the 3D view, you'll see that the, uh, the sketch is on the surface. And if I pick the cut command, I have the surface selected. If I were to pick a different surface, um, you know, I could, uh, I could actually draw sketches on there too. But in this particular case, I'm going to go back to this surface and I'm going to go to the cut command. There we are. You can see how it's making the cut into the object. If I use the scroll wheel, again, um, I can adjust the size of that cut, the, or the depth. So if I hold down the shift key, I can move that pretty quickly using the scroll wheel. Um, and I'm just going to go and I'm going to make those two holes. So I hit OK. And it creates the holes. You'll notice that if you click on a feature, like if I click on that feature right there, how it brings me back into the editor for that. So I could adjust this. I could adjust this to something um, a little bit shorter. And if I hit OK, it's going to step me through the commands again until the, uh, the object is finished. So that's kind of the beauty of having a parametric modeler is that you can go back and you can tweak you can tweak the geometry, you can update the features. I could even go in here and click on that pad and edit the sketch. So once I've clicked on the pad, I can edit the sketch. And if I wanted to, I could adjust the size of it, just like that. And if I hit save and I go back over to the 3D view and hit OK and hit OK, you could see how my object is updated. I hope you liked this short little tutorial on the extrude and cut commands. Okay, thank you. Bye.